In this video, we'll learn about entity references, physics colliders, and collision events. So let's finish off our gameplay by adding in some fire mechanics for our player. On my player entity, I'm going to select the input event binding that I have here, and I can just open it in the asset editor. I'm going to click the plus icon. For event name, I'll name it fire. For the event generator, I'll use an input event map. And I'll set it to mouse, and you can see it's already set to mouse button left. So I'll make sure to save that input binding. Then I'm going to go to the script canvas component and open up that window. Now in my player controller script canvas, I'm going to add another input handler node. So I'll just copy the one I had before. Connect connect event to on entity activated and change the event name to fire. Similar to our enemy spawner, I'll create a rocket prefab spawnable script asset ref variable. So I'm going to type in ref and I'm going to type in rocket prefab for the name. For the variable, I'll set the asset to the rocket. I'm going to create a create spawn ticket node. When the input is pressed, I'll create the ticket using my rocket prefab as my prefab source. And I'll need a spawn ticket variable. And I'll just name this rocket ticket and set that as the result. Now we'll need a location to fire our rocket from. So first I'm going to create a get local translation node. Instead of the entity being the source from the player, I'm going to create a variable for an entity ID called firepoint. And I'm going to set this from component. So we have a child entity of our player that we'll use as the source for that firepoint. So we'll set that in the editor later. And then finally, I'm going to create a spawn node. Connect out to request spawn and translation to local translation. And for the spawn ticket, I will use that ticket that I made before. Now, because we're going to be spawning a lot of different rockets, I'm going to create a get first element node. So this will get the first element from our list of rockets that will be spawned. Make sure to connect spawn entities list to container. I'm going to make a get world translation node. I'll connect out to in and for the world translation, I'm going to use the fire point as the source. And then I'm going to reset the world translation using the translation of our fire point and set the value, our missile, to the source so that it will reset the translation of the missile that we spawn. Make sure to save that. And then back in O3DE, on my player entity, I'm going to set my fire point reference to the firepoint child entity under our player. And then if I save and press play, when I press my left mouse button, you can see here that I am firing from my player, which is very exciting. Now, one last thing we'll need to fix so that our player can be hit by our enemies. I'm gonna select the player entity. I'm going to turn on CCD, which is continuous collision detection. Under my physics collider, I'm going to set the collision layer to player, enable trigger, and then I'll change the shape from physics asset to a capsule. You can see here we have an error for our physics material. You can click the folder icon and we're going to find a plastic physics material. Now we'll need to adjust our capsule collider. You can see it's a little misaligned from our player. I'm going to set the height to 22.5 and the radius to three. And then I can change the offset to 10 so that it lines up better with our player. Last but not least, to fix a little issue with our colliders, if you select the ground plane, it may have a physics rigid body or a physics collider on it. You can just remove those components because we won't need them. Finally, to actually use our triggers, I'm going to create a get 
on trigger enter event. I'll connect in to our on entity activated node. I'm going to make two other nodes, a get trigger entity ID and get other entity ID. So the other entity ID will be whatever collides with our player and the trigger entity ID is our actual player. So when these collisions occur, I'm just going to use a destroy game entity and descendants node. And I can actually just use these for both. Connect the out to the in, the other entity ID to the entity ID, and same thing from our trigger entity. Set the trigger entity ID to the entity ID. So now, when I'm testing in my game, if I collide with any of the blasters, I despawn and I can lose the game.